What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back, everyone. This is Lee, and yes, today's today we'll be talking about the Nikon Z50 with the Nikon 200 to 500 telephoto lens. Now, a lot of you guys are watching this because you guys are either new owners of the Z50 or planning to buy the Z50, and you're probably wondering, can the FTZ adapter along with the Z50, can these two combos work nice with the F mount 200 to 500 lens? And in my short answer, yes, this works just fine. Strangely enough, this is really weird for me to say, but it actually works pretty good. Now, there are some cons with this setup. If I have to give this a rating, it'll be roughly around eight out of 10. Now, let me explain why. If you're shooting big subjects like dogs, humans, vehicles, this is perfect. This is perfect. Now, if you're shooting birds in flight, this is also a pretty good system. However, if you're shooting a bird that's in front of a complex scene and the colors are very similar, this camera do miss autofocus a lot. I mean, a lot. So this is not a Nikon only thing. I have seen this in the Fuji. I also have seen this in the Sonys, in the low end Sonys, of course, the entry level ones, the A6000 series. So just keep that in mind. This is a mirrorless thing, it seems. So with all that in mind, let me show you guys the shutters now. I have the D500 right here, and here is the Z50. This is what the shutter sounds like with the SD Extreme Pro cards. Now, with the D500, of course I took out the QXD card, just to be fair, and this is what it sounds like with just the SD card. And this is what it sounds like with both of them together. One, two, and three. It's, it sounds roughly the same, in my opinion. But let me know down below what you guys think. So, I just want to show you guys this because they share the same image quality. And so far with the same SD card, it actually fires pretty much the same, except this has QXD card. So my settings for this camera is F8 on the telephoto lens because I had about three copies of this 2500 and it seems like F8 is the sharpest point of the 2500. 5.6 is kind of soft. Now with the camera itself, the Z50, of course I was on autofocus continuous and mainly I was shooting on auto area autofocus just because when I was shooting in dynamic area autofocus, when you're focusing on a subject that's moving, once you hit that shutter, you go like one second behind time. And so if your subject is out of your aim, your camera goes, you know, it just starts missing the subject at that point. So because of mirrorless, you're always behind time. So with dynamic area autofocus, it does not work that well. I just kept it on auto area autofocus on this camera and it works, I guess 80% of the time it works just fine. With all that in mind, let me show you guys some samples. Now here's a seagull right here, and this is a issue that most people will run into. You're tracking the gull, you're tracking, it's going up now. And keep in mind, whenever I take a shot, I'm one second behind time. So the next shot, I need to over predict the position of the bird. For this particular scene right here, I did not over predict my movement towards the bird, and I lost the bird in frame, and as you can tell, I'm trying to over predict the movement. And yeah, that is something that most people will run into when they're shooting with this camera or any mirrorless system. So keep that in mind. As you can see, I lost, let me, let me go back a little bit. It went out the frame right there and then it tried to regain the focus and I took the shot. I did not get focused at the time, but for this shot right here, it almost got the focus and then boom, it just regains its focus. Now, that's pretty impressive right there. And for this next sequence, I'm taking a picture of this Osprey right here and keep in mind, I'm shooting at a clear sky. So. Most of the shots should be in focus, except that one and that one. There's two. That's in focus. Semi focus. Focus. Semi focus. 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 Focused. Focus. So I basically missed it four shots out of the 15 shots. So that's not too bad, actually. Now, here is another scenario right here. I am tracking this heroin right there. 
and it's just flying through this busy scene and this is the complex scene right here and so as you can tell that the camera can't track the bird that well it just doesn't track it once at all so that's something that i noticed in this camera uh, fuji had this issue sony also had this issue as well this is just a mirrorless thing now later on when this bird do take off and it hits the clear skies that's when the autofocus is able to track the bird so the bird is still there it's just right here and once it hit the sky give it a moment it's gonna hit the sky right here it's gonna slowly regain slight focus go miss that focus and then boom it gets the focus right there sharp like a needle so this camera basically tells me that it's only good for clear sky shooting or blue sky shooting so for birds and this next sequence is just a boat that's going right to left and yeah everything is just in focus it's simple it's, it could just track that so for those people that are shooting big subjects this camera doesn't have any issue in tracking boats all right so here's my next sequence and essentially i'm just taking a picture of this osprey and i'm just doing the exact same thing as i did before i'm just trying to keep the bird in frame i'm just trying to fight the lag and over predict my shots when i take it and also i want to bring out that i'm battling two extra things that people probably don't see in this, in this image i am fighting the heat it was really hot on this day and also i'm battling the sun so i don't know if the camera got affected by the sun or not but uh, i think most of the shot were sort of all in focus or something were slightly out of focus but uh, in the end i was pretty satisfied with what i got and so all right, so here's my next sequence. I'm just tracking this bird right here. This, this is a juvenile ball eagle. As you can see, I'm doing the exact same thing. It lost focus right here. I think it was just going through the edges. And uh, I think it regained the focus right there. Regained the focus. Lost focus. Regained the focus. Regained the focus. Still in focus. Still in focus. Still in focus. Still in focus. Also in focus. Definitely lost focus. So it seems like once it flies to the edge, I just lose focus. So that's just something for you guys to anticipate when you are shooting outdoors with this setup. All right. In this sequence, this is an Osprey. And uh, yeah, I'm just doing the same thing. The Osprey went out of frame. But for this time, it actually caught the bird in focus and focus and focus and focus. And I think we can all agree that it's about, I would have to say roughly around 80% of keepers. I would have to say blue sky shooting. So that's just something for you guys to take note of. You guys are definitely taking this out for a wildlife shoot. Now with all that in mind, definitely I would have to say with the Z50 along with the 200 to 500 F mount lens, it works pretty good. Surprisingly good. I was really, yeah, I was really stunned on how well it actually responded. Yeah, it was pretty good. I'm actually kind of curious on the future of the Z50 um, camera now um, or the Z lineup for the APS-C sensor. This is pretty awesome actually. Now, there is one or two things that I want to bring up that kind of bug me a lot on this system. Number one, if you are shooting and you are changing the menus a lot, if you don't exit that menu, the first thing that will pop up in your EVF is the menu. Yes. Please log out from your menu once you're done. For me, for some reason, I noticed many times in my shooting, I did not log out in my menu. So when I was aiming at the bird, I was looking at the menus. That was so weird because I'm so used to OVF, right? And the second thing is, it's kind of similar as, as well. If you are, you know, not shooting for a while, the camera unit goes to sleep a little bit. To wake up the camera to shoot the bird, it takes about a long two to three seconds. Yeah, so I have to like hit the trigger, wait for it to wake up, and then it'll just, you know, then you're able to shoot your shot. So that's minor things, actually. Those can definitely be adjusted, but just wanted you guys to know about my experience. So anyways, thank you guys for checking me back. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Definitely click like and subscribe, and don't forget to check out the merch store, and definitely I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Take it easy. Peace.